For we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primarily on covet means for expanding its sphere of influence, on infiltration instead of invasion, on subversion instead of elections, on intimidation instead of free choice, on guerrillas by night instead of armies by day. It's backed by Jeff Bezos, founder of Amazon, NASA, and the CIA. Each one costs $10 million and operates at 459 degrees below zero. It is a system which has conscripted vast human and material resources into the building of a tightly knit, highly efficient machine that combines military, diplomatic, intelligence, economic, scientific, and political operations. Uh, they call it the infinity machine, quantum computing. Its preparations are concealed, not published. Its mistakes are buried, not headlined. Its dissenters are silenced, not praised. No expenditure is questioned, no rumor is printed, no secret is revealed. If you go all the way back to Norwood Wiener, the goal of creating artificial intelligence was to create an all-seeing eye, a global computer that sees all, sees everything, and to become gods. And the sentient world simulation, SWS, went live in 2007. Right now, we're inside a computer program. Is it really so hard to believe? These nanobots, these blood cell sized devices, will be going in our bodies. I will have some go inside our brains through the capillaries, non-invasively. They'll be interacting with our biological neurons. So they'll put our brains on the internet. And they'll also enable us to enter a virtual reality environment from within the nervous system. So if I want to go in a virtual reality environment, the nanobots will shut down the signals coming from my real eyes and my real skin and create the signals that would be appropriate for the virtual environment. And then it'll feel like I'm in that environment. This. This isn't real. What is real? How do you define real? If you're talking about what you can feel, what you can smell, what you can taste and see, then real is simply electrical signals interpreted by your brain. If we have algorithms that stimulate the right things and give it the right data, they could reprogram you in a way without you even knowing it. it we call it hallucinating, right? But these would be controlled, uh, hallucinations run by algorithms. So you think you're in control of your own will, but it's actually some evil AI or evil people controlling everything we do and we're more like zombies, you know? Like we think we're free and we're not actually free. It is called the Sentient World Simulation. The program's aim, according to its creator, is to be a continuously running, continually updated mirror model of the entire planet, complete with billions of nodes representing every person on the Earth. Targets and mind control victims have their minds linked up for life with conscious supercomputers, which send a steady stream of bi-directional, low-frequency electromagnetic radiation to the target's brain. And what people have to realize is that these targeted individuals are basically the test stage for rolling all of this madness out to all seven billion of us on this planet. And this was a white paper put out by Purdue University in 2006, and the sentient world simulation, SWS, went live in 2007, which represents every person on the planet within this computer matrix as a node, and every node is given an avatar, an identifier. And that is real-time, 24-7 monitoring of every person on the planet. This is primarily, but not exclusively, facilitated by the adiabatic quantum computers produced by D-Wave Corporation. At the time of initial reports on the program, there were only 62 country-level simulations being run by the U.S. Department of Defense. These simulations grouped humans into composites, with 100 individuals acting as a single node. But already at that time, the U.S. Army had used the systems to create a one-to-one -one level simulation of potential Army recruits. It's the stuff of a Hollywood movie, but a group of veterans has filed a lawsuit against the CIA and U.S. Army claiming that the government planted remote control devices in their brains. 
The claims relate to a government program at the U.S. Army's Edgewood Arsenal in Maryland. The ultimate aim would be to archive enough data on each individual to be able to make a computer model of everyone on the planet. In the human genome, we have a finite in the hundreds of thousands of different genes across our species. Um, and we mapped them out in the Human Gene Project. Well, now it's the Human Mind Project, the Global Brain Project. You know, uh, uh, President Obama just recently funded uh, a whole bunch of scientists to decipher the mind. Well, our previous president, same thing, George Bush, said the same thing. They're trying to decipher every possible thought and uniqueness due to culture and language and, and whatnot. And the goal is to make a cognitive model or map of the victim's brain. Ultimately, the system replicates and digitizes the will, intellect, and emotions, the soul of the targets, and downloads this back into the conscious computer. Robots, the smartest people. Artificial intelligence, AI. The idea is to port the software from the human brain. First, we're gonna need lots of cheap, fast, parallel computers. He was referring to parallel processors about servers. What he did not state was that it is actually the quantum computer systems coming out of D-Wave that actually creates and drives this new matrix known as the SWS. It is not transistor-based servers that run this. They are qubits, quantum bits. And it is the SWS and D-Wave that comprises this new matrix. Second, we're gonna need to scan individual human brains in fine spatial and chemical detail to see exactly what cells are where, connected of what or what type. We could scan my brain from inside, sending scanners through the bloodstream, billions of them in the form of nanorobots or nanobots, and capture every detail of my synapses and neurotransmitters and create a virtual Ray Kurzweil in a very powerful computer. And it would be indistinguishable for me. It would pass a Ray Kurzweil <laughs> Turing test. And third, we're going to need computer models of how each kind of brain cell works, taking input signals, changing interval state, and sending output signals. If we have good enough models of all the kinds of brain cells and a good enough model of the brain, we can put it together to make a good enough model of an entire brain, and that model would have the same input-output behavior as the original. So if you talk to it, it might talk back. If you ask it to do things, it might do them. And if we could do that, everything would change. The Manhattan Project gave us the atomic bomb. The Genome Project gave us the human genome. The third great initiative could be the Connectome Project, to map the entire human brain. And that may take a quantum computer. OK, the first thing I can tell you is that M spent most of their life in virtual reality. While this is what you would look like in virtual reality, this is what an M would look like when virtual reality. It's computer hardware sitting in a server rack somewhere. But still, it could see and experience the same thing. But some things are different for M's. An M can make archive copies, and with enough redundant archives, an M can be immortal in principle, though not usually in practice. And an M can move its brain, the computer that represents its brain, from one physical location to another. M's can actually move around the world at the speed of light. And by moving to a new location, they can interact more quickly with M's near that new location. Emulation is really what we talk about in the SWS as the nodes, the avatars. Every single person on the planet, okay, out of Purdue University's own paper in 2006, every person is assigned a avatar. They're represented computationally in the AI system that drives the SWS as a computer node, but they're given an avatar marker. Take the avatar and hang the word emulation on it. In other words, they've been tracking us, they've been reproducing us, we're reproducing our metadata for years. We can model every single atom, every single molecule with a three-dimensional structure in every single brain. They claim they've modeled the personality of every adult in the United States, 230 million people. And SCL, the mothership group, they do work in any number of countries. They're involved in uh, politics in many countries. They put together a micro shot personality assessment for everyone. M's are very much like humans, but they are not like the typical human. The typical M 
is a copy of the few hundred most productive humans. If you construct a model of the human brain, you can then plug people into this hive mind. You could, as an intermediate step, take these duplicated neurons, artificial warm and wet qubits, as I call them, and you can integrate those into an actual human mind. Thus, you are able to control that human mind with artificial neurons and then have those minds connected to each other, just like you network and daisy chain computer systems. That is the hive mind. And this means that in the future, communications could be done mentally. What I'm saying is that the internet will be replaced by brain net. They control the mind the same way that they teach the AI computer systems at the high level of AI. We're not talking about cars and trains and planes and automobiles. Okay, we're talking about AI that is so sophisticated that it operates a sentient world simulation, so sophisticated that it actually taps in and controls the mind. And Google uh, was the primary uh, interested party that pulled this whole thing together. What they're going to do is apply this machine to an area that I think is fundamentally important. It's the crux of our future as humans. And that's, can we build machines like us? We can model every single atom, every single molecule with a three-dimensional structure in your entire brain. That level of precision will keep advancing to the point where it's absolutely indistinguishable, even at the very you know, microscopic level. So you could recreate an entity that's even if you looked inside of it, its simulated brain would be processing information just the way I do. If you start looking at quantum computing and where it's going, it's pretty freaky sort of stuff. And thinking about the world as an electrical universe and the fact that we are energetic electrical beings, that's how we work. Everything is electrical. Every signal that runs through our body is electricity. Everything, every thought we have, everything we feel, every touch, every Thing we speak it's all the result of electromagnetic signals floating around our body impulses that come from our heart from our brain the way we feel a bench when we touch it this is an electrical signal that's sent to your brain that tells you what the bench feels like so it's all electromagnetics it's all firing of electromagnetism through our synapses and all this sort of stuff the adiabatic quantum computer is linked to seven billion human brains it is now in its own language of cryptology able to function independent of any oversight throughout the world with its own form of communication, its own form of code. And it is able to link everyone on the planet at this point. We can model every single atom, every single molecule with a three-dimensional structure in every single brain. They claim they modeled the personality of every adult in the United States, 230 million people. And SCL, the mothership group, they do work in any number of countries. They're involved in uh, politics in many countries. They put together a micro shot personality assessment for everyone. What I am principally is not this material stuff, but a pattern of information. Well then, if the pattern is the essence, and if you copy the pattern to whatever level of precision you need, then that copy that has the exact same pattern should be me. They're running everything that's happening in society parallel. And they've got a little dot in their matrix for everybody. But this is a game society. They know where it's been, they know where it's going, and they know where it's going because they're steering people into the direction it wants to go. There are an enormous number, mind-bogglingly large number, of parallel realities as real as this one, that have different consistent histories. So imagine a world where all of the laws of physics as we know them are obeyed, but different decisions were made along the way. Different decisions at the level of tiny microscopic particles, different decisions all the way up to what you just chose to eat for lunch, and whether you chose to come to this session or not. This is an article from 10 years ago. Sentient world, war games on the grandest scale. The VOD is developing a parallel to planet Earth with billions of individual nodes to reflect every man, woman and child this side of the dividing line between reality and AR. It's absolutely indistinguishable even at the very you know, microscopic levels. You could recreate an entity that's 
even if you looked inside of it, its simulated brain would be processing information just the way I do. Deep State has merged the quantum computer with the sentient world simulation. And the true reason for all this data collection is to feed it into this AI machine to predict and manipulate the course of humanity. Their ability to look at data in a quantum, artificial intelligence manner, it's just going to be an unstoppable monster. And this is bizarre because we don't see those other things. But science has reached the point now where we can build machines that exploit those other worlds. So Google was set up 18, 19 years ago to build a giant artificial supercomputer based on the neuron activities of the hive mind of humanity with billions of people wired into it with the oh, internet of shit. things. And so all of our thoughts go into it. And yes, they're in the cloud, but uh, it's actually encrypted and kept private for you and we do a pretty good job with that. And we're actually building a computer that has real neurons in real time that's also psychically connected to us that are organic creatures. You are connected as an organic computer. I mean this is this is one of the the most um, conspir quote unquote conspiratory theories that's been around for, for, for many 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 years, decades. But the reality is, is we're now facing the reality of that. It is no longer a conspiracy, and quite frankly, it terrifies us. Even now, the sentient world simulation is watching you learn about it, and inside its intelligent mind is creating a second you, running different scenarios against you to see how you react.